It's almost 2015, which means time to look back at 2014 and see what happens. Today, let's focus on the year in science. I'm Carly Mallenbaugh, and I'm here with our USA Today science contributor, Tracy Watson, who can help us look at this year in science. And, and actually, it was an interesting year, right? I, we wanted to talk about the great achievements in science, but um, how would you characterize 2014 in science? Yes, there were some wonderful high points, including a lot of interesting discoveries from Mar the Mars rover, but there were also some really high-profile embarrassments. For starters, there was the stem cell screw-up. Scientists announced in January in the journal Nature, which is one of the most prestigious and high-profile journals in the world, that they discovered a very simple way of making stem cells, which are really important for medical applications. But that really quickly unraveled, and investigators concluded that the researchers, or one of the researchers, had actually uh, committed scientific misconduct. And the journal ended up having to withdraw both of those papers, and one of the researchers sadly committed suicide because of the, the scandal in the end. Uh, another big science story this year was about Philae, am I pronouncing that right? Yes. Um, landing on a comet, that yes. was really exciting. Yes. Um, that didn't go exactly as planned though, right? What happened? Yeah, this one's kind of a mixed bag. You can't really score it as a loser, but it's not a complete winner either. So Philae achieved history by becoming the first spacecraft to land on a comet and everybody was cheering. But things didn't go quite according to planned. Some of the apparatus that was meant to anchor the spacecraft onto the comet didn't work properly. Feely ended up bouncing like a basketball oh. off the surface. It finally came to rest in a crevasse that's pretty dark. So it wasn't able to carry out its full scientific program and now it has gone to sleep after just a couple of days oh, of man. operations. <laughs> yes, very sad. They do expect it to wake up in the spring when it starts to get more sun and they do have pretty high confidence that we'll start gathering data again, but there's one instrument at least that had its only shot in November and won't have another. So they, they, they're a little sad that it's not, it didn't go completely according to plan, but it, it should hopefully get better in, in, the, in the spring. Another science, exciting science thing that happened that later turned out to be not so exciting is you talk about in your story, um, there was this discovery that maybe the universe expanded early. Can you explain yes. this finding and, and what happened with this finding? Yes, so in March there was a very high profile press conference by scientists from Harvard and elsewhere announcing that they'd seen radiation patterns in the universe showing that there was such a thing as cosmic expansion, which was a super, super fast expansion of the universe at the very beginning of the Big Bang billions and billions of years ago. And scientists have been looking for evidence of what's called inflation for decades, and they were very, very excited about this. One physicist called this the discovery of the century. But? <laughs> but, and there's a but. Yeah. Doubts quickly surfaced about whether this was true or not, and by May there was a lot of skepticism in the scientific community. And by June, the researchers themselves who had announced this discovery were starting to get a little bit of caution, little, little cautious about it. Now, there's, n there's pretty strong new evidence that what they saw was not evidence of expansion, but possibly dust. Oh. And it's still possible that they'll turn out to have been right. It's still possible that they found evidence of, of cosmic inflation. I've noticed that in movies, in TV shows, there's actually been a big emphasis on science. In the movies, like in that blockbuster Interstellar, some award season favorites like Imitation Game, that Alan Turing movie. Um, what's your sense of how science in entertainment did this year? Do you think it did well? Well, there are certainly a lot of high profile movies about science, many more than I can remember, and about pretty serious science too, like cosmology, and profiled in the Stephen Hawking movie. Scientists generally don't give those movies very high reviews for their <laughs> science. Um, uh, the, the Stephen Hawking movie and the Alan Turing movie have been knocked pretty hard for either glossing very lightly over the science or actually getting it wrong. Oh, and meanwhile, our movie critic loved those, and I love them too, <laughs> because we didn't, I don't know, different point of view. Yeah, very different <laughs> point of view. That doesn't, say that doesn't say that they're not entertaining, just that yes. maybe you shouldn't kind of take them as science textbooks. Right. Well, thank you so much, Tracy, for talking to us about science. If you want to read more about the year in review and any other kinds of topics, you can find that all on our website. It's usatoday.com.